Welcome to the Spirit Field Leadership Podcast. I'm Pete Burak. We got Miguel behind the camera. We're ready to go. This episode is called Keeping Your Promises. Keeping Your Promises. One of the big jobs of a leader is to set a compelling vision, to lay out a, a, a path for people to follow, right? We've talked about this before. The part of the role of a leader is to say, this is where we are. This is where we need to get to. And here's why we need to go there. And another way to put it is like to develop such a restlessness with the here that when you describe the there, that people actually want to follow you to that destination. Right. And so it's it's important that we are able to generate enthusiasm, buy in, uh, anticipation, expectation, uh, hope in what is to come. But there's a danger that lies in that. And then one of the dangers that can befall us as a leader is in the, the maybe even the noble effort to get people to do things, to get people to see a new vision, to get people to change their behavior, to get people to follow you. We can run the risk of, of promising things, uh, promising outcomes, promising change, promising reward, promising something that may or may not be true, may or may not be possible, may or may not happen. And what I want to try to parse out in this episode is the difference between the uh, the pure-hearted, spirit-led kind of description of what could be and and the, the subsequent kind of promises that come with that and the more self-serving, um, prideful, insecure promises that often come when, as leaders, our backs up are against the wall and we feel like we're losing people, so we got to make a promise. We got to make a bold statement. We got to chart a new course of action. There's a difference there, and I want to try to parse that out. One of the things that we talk about a lot on the ID team is um, we don't want to keep talking about something unless we're really going to do something about it. I'm going to say that again. We try not to keep talking about something unless we intend to actually do something about it. In other words, let's not talk about it unless we're going to do it. There's there's time and a place for just like the pure speculation vision, what could be, let's just like throw things at the wall, see what sticks, kind of that Oh, man, what if it was like this? But if you live in that realm for too long, especially as a leader, what can easily happen is people can kind of lose sight of what is vision and kind of imagination and uh, fun, like speculation and the day to day of what we actually are striving for. What what are we where are we actually going? What is the outcome we're really looking for? And so if you keep talking about this big vision, but you actually aren't doing anything about it, what it does is it undercuts your credibility as a leader who actually knows where we're going. If you keep talking about something that no progress, no real progress is being made towards, and you just keep throwing out these big ideas that make so much, that are so exciting that people can be like, wow, that would be amazing. But then they're not followed up with any discernible action that would actually lead to that outcome. You're not, you're not you know, casting a vision, you're creating an illusion. You're, you're talking about, uh, you're, you're living in the world of fantasy. And as a leader, every once in a while, dipping into fantasy to just kind of say like, man, what could be is exciting and fun and worth it. But very quickly, we need to move from fantasy to the reality of, okay, actually, this is what God has called us to. And it might be big and it might be intimidating and it might be scary. And there might be giants in that promised land. But if that's the land he's calling us to, and the promise of God is that he's going to lead us to it. And that we, as a people can actually make progress towards that promised land and we're right up against the Jordan River and now it's time to cross. Now all of a sudden that's a totally different arrangement. It's a totally different um, expectation and totally different uh, way that you're leading because the people you're leading are seeing that you're not just full of talk, you're full of of doing as well. That it's not just, I, I don't know, I can never tell with this leader whether or not he's even serious about this because he says all these things but half the time we never follow up on them. Or in a meeting, you know, man, 15 bold proclamations will come out, but I don't know of those 15, am I supposed to act on any of them or which ones are real? Because every meeting there's 15 new ones. And I fall into this trap all the time because I'm an ideas guy. I love talking about new things, better things, bigger things, wider things. What more could we do? And I've had to really work on the discipline of saying, okay, we're only going to keep talking about it if we're really intending to do something about it. So what I want to do is give you four tips on uh, how to keep your promises and protect yourself from uh, falling into that trap of promising something we can't deliver on or promising something out of pride, insecurity, or fear. So first tip, say less, do more. Say less, do more. As a leader, if your instinct is actually to say less and to 
discipline yourself to say in those moments where your instinct wants to say, well, don't worry, we're going to go do this or no, everybody, it's going to be okay because of this. A lot of times it's better to just discipline yourself, stay small, stay silent, and then go do the thing. If you want people to, to trust your leadership, they're going to trust the action. If the action is illustrative of the what you say. So if the action is coming out of what you say and the things you say are relatively minimal so that they can dis- they can see very clearly he said this and now look he's doing something about it. She said this, now she's actually going about the business of getting it done. Whew. That's a powerful thing. If as leaders we can be slow to promise but quick in our action, quick in our service, quick in our in our doing. Now Again, don't don't get me wrong that like there's a time and a place for slow, prudent movement and and the actual doing of something. I'm not trying to get into like a process conversation here about like when do we do and when do we not and all that. But my point is this is as a leader, if the discipline of promises can be limited and small and select and our our action can be broad and wide and extensive and seen It'll actually generate the type of loyalty and the type of trust and the type of uh, credibility that when we say something, people know that there's action that comes from behind it. Okay, so say less, do more. Number two, um, as you set a course of action, as you as you make a big promise or make a big vision, be very transparent about the process and the progress. Because one of the things that happens is if if you set a, a a big vision, a big goal, or kind of a big brand promise, and Nobody hears how it's going. And then all of a sudden it doesn't work. Or all of a sudden it, it doesn't quite work the say you were uh, the way it was going to. Or maybe it's like almost there, but not quite. Or maybe even if it's better. Any version of that, if you're not inviting people appropriately into a, some sort of transparent, this is how the process is going. This is the progress we're making. If they if the only time they hear from you is like big vision and then whether or not it happened. Over and over again, that's going to erode the trust of like, well, whatever this guy says, it never seems to be exactly how it turns out. So he must not know what he's doing. She must not really understand the process. But if you're saying this is where we're going, this is how we're going to get there. And this is how we're doing along the way. And you just keep inviting people into that. They're going to see and you're going to invite them into when things start to change a little bit. When when you thought we thought we were headed towards A, we're actually ending towards B. And that's a better outcome. Even though it wasn't what we initially planned on, isn't what we initially promised. Actually, we thought we were headed to A. Now we're headed to B. That's even a better thing. And people will see that and your credibility as a leader will grow and the trust in your ability to discern and pivot and lead the organization, that whole thing, the the whole organizational trust will grow when they say, wow, yeah, okay, there is a process that we're working and this process is producing a different outcome and the progress we're making towards that, we can see it, we can chart it. And you know what? You're right. This decision that that we can actually celebrate where we ended up, even though it wasn't exactly what we thought it was going to be. Say less, do more. Be transparent about the process and the progress. This one, then this next one is tied to this is go ahead and modify the goals, but explain why. If the promise is changing or the goal is changing because, oh, wow, we thought we were going to have this and and it's not working or we set out on this path and man, it's going way better than we ever thought it would. We need to adjust our goalposts. We need to push even further down the road. Whatever is revealing itself that means we need to change our goal or our promise needs to change. We need to be clear about what is changing and then to explain why. Don't just come into a meeting with your wife or with your team or you know with your children or whatever and just say, yeah, we said we were going to do this. Now we're doing this. Or I told you we were going to do this. And now guess what? Actually, we're going to be over here. People are going to be so thrown off, especially when it's a strong kind of like when you've really invited people into a compelling vision and they've bought in and you've won them to it. I mean, you got to be able to honor that by by saying like, okay, yeah, you've bought into this. What you've bought into is is changing. And here's why. And you have to know that whenever a goal change or whenever a promise changes, that is an opportunity where people may say, no, I don't want this anymore. And that's why discerning both the initial promise and goal and discerning when it needs to change are so important. 
because there are there is going to be fallout from that. There's going to be probably some hurt. There's going to be some confusion. There may even be some I I I don't want this anymore. And that's why being slow to to promise and quick to act is so important. That's why being transparent about the process and progress is so important. That's why if you, the goal is changing or the promise is changing, explaining why gives you the best chance to be able to continue to to develop that buy-in and continue even if people decide no i don't where i don't like where this is going i want to do something different at least they can leave with a full understanding of why and the the how we got to that conclusion okay and then finally this one's more personal so you say less do more be transparent about the process and the progress modify the goals but explain why and then you need to personally live from the promises of god Every promise that we make to ourselves or to the people we're leading should find some origin, should find some pathway from a promise that God has made to us. Because the only promises that are non-negotiably true, the only promises that you can take to the bank every time, the only promises that don't change, the only promises that are undefeated, if you will, are what the Lord has said to us and revealed to us through the teaching of the church and through sacred scripture. So to be able to foster within yourself an awareness of, a faith in, and a kind of a living conviction around what God has promised about you and me first, and allow that to be the bedrock of our life so that when it's time to lead others into a more superficial promise, we properly understand the difference that the promises of God are of eternal consequence. You know, the promises of our organization are more of a temporal consequence generally, right? And to be okay with that distinction and to understand the difference in those distinctions and to know that really uh, anything that is good, true, and beautiful is originating from the Lord. And every good leader, even if you're in the secular space, needs to be striving to live in the good and the true and the beautiful needs to be leading their people into a greater expression and awareness of and transformation by the good, the true, and beautiful. So promises like Jesus says, Lo, I will be with you always to the end of the age. Promises like when two or more are gathered, there I am among you. Promises like seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added to you. I mean, that's that's such an important promise if you're leading anything of, of a Catholic or spiritual variety. If you're a Christian, Jesus is saying, seek first the kingdom and then... These other things will be added to you. He knows you need food. He knows you need clothes. He knows you need a, a place to live. He's saying, seek first the kingdom. And I mean, think about the ramifications of that promise for your organization. To ask ourselves, like, what does it look like for our marriage to seek first the kingdom? What does it look like for our nonprofit to seek first the kingdom? Because that's a promise of God, that when we seek first the kingdom, the other things will be added to us. And that's not a prosperity gospel. That's a loving father gospel. That's a father taking care of his children. And there's so many others, you know, the promise that one the father who sees in secret will reward in secret. You know, when Jesus is giving that example of like, don't stand on the street form or street corner and look like you're, you know, let everyone know that you're fasting and that you're, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're doing these long prayers. No, no. Fast in private, pray in private. And the father who sees in private will reward in private. There's, I mean, I could go list and list and list of the promises of God. And I'm telling you, the more that I've come to understand and believe those promises, the more it's impacted the promises I make to my kids, the promises I make to the people I'm leading, the promises my wife and I make to each other. They are all informed by the promises of God. So this is a a weird episode in the sense of like, it's a little bit existential. It's a little bit like, how does this actually apply to me? I get that it's kind of wishy. It's a a little bit all over the place. But there's a way at which as as a leader, we need to be very aware of and very selective in the promises that we make. And I, and I, throughout the episode, I know I was kind of conflating promises and goals, but they're related. A lot of times we'll set a goal as if it's a promise. If we do these things, this is the outcome that it will come to. And so we have to be just very careful about that because the only the promises of God are you can take to the bank every time. Only the promises of God are always true. So <clears throat> let's not talk about it unless we're serious about doing something about it. Let's say less and do more. Let's be transparent about the process and the progress. Let's modify the goals if we need to, but explain why. And then personally live from the promises of God and let that inform the promises you make to other people. This has been the Spirit-Filled Leadership Podcast. I'm Pete. That's Miguel. 
If you've enjoyed this episode, we'd invite you to share it, like it, comment, rate it, do whatever it is you need to do to let the public know that you're enjoying this. Uh, we're releasing these every other Wednesday. We've got some reels on Instagram that are fun and informative. So you can follow us on Instagram either at, at intentional disciples or at SFL podcast. We'll be back in a couple weeks with a new episode. God bless. Come take my hand. We'll dance on